in the last stream, we were working on beginning to work towards better or processing. I mentioned it a little bit in the last stream, but uh, at the moment, all of our resources are currently being processed through this very simple pulverizer and redstone furnace system that we set up quite a while ago now. And I think we're finally at the point where we should definitely look into using mechanism to double, triple, quadruple, and potentially even quintuple all of our chunks into even more ingots. So that's kind of what I want to work on in today's stream. We did start working towards it a little bit in the last stream. We taught our system how to make pulverizers, because if we're going to make a bunch of the mechanism machines required to set up or quintupling, we are going to need a ton of pulverizers. So much, in fact, that I think right out of the gate here, I'm going to request 63 more to give us a full stack of pulverizers right from the get go. While those get made between streams, I have gone ahead and used the exchanging gadget on basically all of the oak planks in the base. And so now every single sphere, with the one exception of the mob spawning sphere over there, has been replaced with clear glass. And I've also done a little bit of work reorganizing some of the rooms, especially at this machine room here, which was getting a bit cramped. Previously, we had this infusion altar up on the same level as the machines. And whilst it's also very cramped on this lower level here, we don't really do that much seed crafting. And so I think the extra space up on this level is going to be well worth having to spend a bit of time on that lower level whenever we do need a, a new seed. And it also gives us a bunch of space to put more machines on this side of the room as well, and potentially even on the back wall uh, if we end up getting rid of this system, which we probably will do just as soon as we have a mechanism system that can more efficiently process all of our resources. Outside of just general reorganization, I have also added a third basic infusing factory to the mix, and that is because as we progress on into the more advanced mechanism machines, uh, we are going to start to require more advanced alloys. Up until now, we've only really been using these infused alloys. However, going forward, we are going to need reinforced and potentially even atomic alloys. Uh, right now, with three infusing factories, we have one that is set up to use redstone, one that is set up to use coal, and the third one, the new one, is going to be set up to use diamonds or diamond dust uh, to make infused alloys into reinforced alloys, uh, which are then in turn going to be used uh, to make some of the more advanced machines like the crushing factory, uh, or potentially even like the chemical dissolution chamber here. This one requires ultimate control circuits, uh, which require elite control circuits, which require those reinforced alloys, which require, uh, if we're going to automate them, a metallurgic infuser dedicated to using diamond to turn infused alloys into reinforced alloys. Uh, and so that's kind of what that is there for. And... On that note, I think we should probably, right out of the gate, do two things. One is I do want to start exporting uh, diamonds to this basic infusing factory uh, so that we can begin teaching it how to make those alloys. Uh, but two, I want to increase the efficiency with which we use our basic infusing factories. Because up until now, uh, we've just been sending the raw materials into this catalyst slot. So we've just been sending regular redstone and regular coal, which is all well and good, but it is extremely inefficient. The reason for that is that you can make it much more efficient uh, by using an enrichment chamber. So the reason we've not made this up until now is that the enrichment chamber is a little pricey. It does require two crushers, which each in turn uh, require two pulverizers. Thankfully, at this point in time, we should have basically everything uh, that we need. I think 30 might be slightly overkill. Let's go with 16 for now. Uh, but we should have basically everything we need to make two crushers, I think, fairly easily. And uh, as for those pulverizers, we do already have half of them ready to go. Uh, between streams, I did also upgrade basically all of our machines to have a resonant integral component and then three flux linkage amplifiers. So all of these machines are basically as fast as they can go. A little bit of time waiting for this craft to complete later. And it turns out that we have a bit of a problem with our system. And that problem is that the machines up here are now too fast to wear down here in the ender chest, which, if you remember, is where all of the items go before they get imported into the system, is backing up, right? All of our items are clogging up in this ender chest because this importer here cannot pull the items out fast enough. Uh, thankfully, 
there is a solution to that. There's actually a few solutions to it. Uh, the first is to make speed upgrades from refined storage. These are thankfully very easy for us to make. And for now, that's going to have to be where we start like that. Uh, going forward, we can also invest in a stack upgrade as well, uh, which we definitely should do here. That's going to allow this importer to import a stack of items at a time as opposed to one item at a time. Chat is also recommending the advanced importer, this guy right here, which is a little bit more expensive than the regular importer that we already have, uh, but apparently is faster. So uh, let's temporarily grab this guy. It's not significantly faster, but it definitely does look at least a little bit faster uh, than the craft before. We can make two more speed upgrades, and then from there, that should be, I think, everything for the stack upgrade, assuming we have enough sugar, which we definitely do. And so now if we put that in, uh, we should hopefully see, look at that, items getting pulled out significantly faster. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could even take this uh, one step further and put speed upgrades in alongside the stack upgrade uh, to really increase the speed at which this works. However, for the time being, I think that is moving things more than fast enough. And so hopefully, Chant, any second now, we should have uh, the steel casings, which it looks like we do, beautiful. And so we should be able to make that enrichment chamber that I was talking about earlier. So let's make two crushers, one and two, and let's upgrade those crushers into the enrichment chamber. Nice. So I think what we're going to do with this is we're going to start um, a new wall of machines, the back wall over here. Uh, the reason I'm doing it over here is because this is uh, already pretty close to our pre-existing uh, Xnet and refined storage cabling. So if we do something like this and we put one of these crafters on top of it, what I want to do here is I want to teach our system how to make enriched carbon, enriched redstone, and enriched diamonds. The idea here is that right now, when you put one piece of coal into the basic infusing factory, you get 10 millibuckets of carbon, which is enough to make one steel dust or one enriched iron, right? So you're essentially using one coal and one iron to make one enriched iron and then one enriched iron and another coal to make one steel dust. However, if you first take that coal and put it into an enrichment chamber, you can turn that coal into enriched carbon and that enriched carbon is used in the same metallurgic infuser, but you get 18 millibuckets of carbon as opposed to the default 10. So you essentially uh, get eight times as much use out of each and every piece of coal as you would by not enriching it first. That's not particularly useful for coal because coal we've already got a fair amount of and it's not something we need a large amount of going forward. It's also not something that's particularly difficult for us to get. However, if we're going to start working on using diamonds and diamond dust to begin making advanced alloys, we're very much so going to want to be more efficient with our diamonds so that we don't just have to pump in, you know, 64 diamonds into the basic infusing factory here to get 64 alloys. Instead, we can just put in eight diamonds that have been pre-enriched in the enrichment chamber, and that will have the same effect. So ideally, we take our crafter, uh, we stick that down on top of here, we grab our wrench, we make sure that is rotated in the correct orientation, which is down. Uh, we then quickly grab one of our pre-existing Xnet connectors, throw that down, let's say right about there. We'll also put you right about here. And then I think cable wise, we're probably gonna have to go and break the corner piece of glass that is currently between here and here. Once that is hooked up, we of course wanna make sure that over in here, uh, we set that to insert on the energy line and of course extract and stack on the uh, item line to pull things into the ender chest. Back over here, we should then be able to teach our system how to make enriched diamonds in code. Uh, we'll of course put that in uh, the new crafter that is above our enrichment chamber, right about there. Uh, and so now what we should be able to do is we should be able to put enriched diamonds. Let's go ahead and request at least one of these. Start and start. Uh, but we can take that enriched diamond and we can put that into the exporter that's on the back of this crafter here. Uh, we are also going to have to make another uh, crafting upgrade as well if we want that to work because of course we want our system uh, to be automatically requesting that the enriched diamond gets made and then exporting that enriched diamond to the metallurgic confuser to make sure that it's always full of enriched diamond. 
So enrich diamond into the exporter with a crafting upgrade. We should then see this kind of fill up uh, with diamonds as those diamonds start getting processed and sent over into this slot here, filling this up uh, with diamond essence, which we can then use to teach our system how to make uh, some of the alloys. So much like before, we can now go ahead and teach our system this recipe, getting rid of that uh, diamond dust because we don't want that in there. Uh, that is being sent separately. Uh, and then we can just, of course, stick that in above that new metallurgic infuser. And the system now knows how to make the advanced alloys, which is pretty cool. Now, before we get too far into the ore processing, I think given that right now we actually don't have that many chunks, most of our chunks um, have been processed and are being processed actively uh, by the pulverizer and redstone furnace here. I think before we start looking at ore processing, it's going to be a better idea for us to look at setting up a laser drill that generates ores for us that we can then use uh, in a future ore processing setup. So uh, between streams, I have gone ahead and made some more blaze wood here. Uh, we can go ahead and combine that up with obsidian, which I have finally moved into its own drawer. It's no longer in a random drawer that's dotted somewhere around the base. And so we should be able to very quickly here make a new compact machine. Uh, basically, what I'm thinking is we need to make a laser base, this one right here, an all laser base, much like the fluid laser base we made previously, uh, and then we can surround that uh, with laser drills. You can use the same laser drills as before. Uh, there's no different, you know, fluid laser drill or all laser drill. They all use the same laser drill. So uh, let's go ahead and quickly see if we don't have what it takes to make an all laser base. Uh, we have actually almost everything here. We are going to need another advanced machine. Thankfully, our system does now know how to make that, and we do have the pink slime for it ready to go. We also need some plastic. Start and start. And at that point, the only thing we're then missing is iron chunks. And by the looks of it, it does specifically have to be iron chunks. So I'm going to remove iron chunks from the exporter there so that any iron chunks that come into the system shouldn't make their way to that pulverizer. And a little bit of waiting around for our overworld matter to produce two iron chunks later. We now have everything that we need to make the ore laser base. And so now what we should be able to do is once again, make another uh, maximum sized compact machine. Good stuff. Uh, again, for now, we'll put it down maybe right about here. Uh, by the way, you can pick up and move your compact machines. Uh, I moved my previous two into the walls over here. Uh, you could just break them with a pickaxe, pick them up, put them down elsewhere, and they will still have the same contents in them as they had previously. So I didn't like rebuild this. Um, I just picked up the machine moved it elsewhere, and then it retains all of its inventory, which is real nice. Uh, over here, though, my plan is, um, I think, on the lower level, so maybe, like, right on the floor here, maybe one block up, actually, um, or maybe two blocks up, actually, uh, we're going to have our laser drill. Uh, the reason why I'm thinking I might go a block or two up is that it allows us to, uh, to put cabling underneath it, like power cables and whatnot. Also, in newer versions of industrial foregoing, the way that the lasers and the drills work seems to have been changed a little bit. Uh, people have been telling me in the Twitch chat uh, that you can now put basically as many lasers as you like around the all laser base so long as the, and they will all work to make the, the machine faster, so long as the all laser base is within the working area of the laser drill. So for example, let's say we put this here and then let's say we put our normal uh, laser drill here. This is kind of normally how you'd set it up. You know, it looks something uh, like this with one on each of the four cardinal directions. So if you go into your laser drill and you click show working area, you can see that the all laser base is inside of the laser drills working area. And so it is gonna work. However, you don't have to put it, you know, one block away like this, like we've always done it. Uh, instead, in the newer versions, you can put these basically anywhere around the all laser base, so long as the all laser base is inside of its working area. And so in fact, we can put our first batch just directly up against the laser base. And then going forward, you can actually put quite a lot of lasers around them. Uh, because for example, if I put one down like here and then show working area, that is within its working area. And so this laser will provide just as much of a speed boost to the all laser drills operating speed as all of the other laser drills are around it. And you can even do that behind other laser drills. So previously, line of sight was required, whereas now, if you do this, again, because the all laser drill is within the working area of this laser drill, both of these laser drills here will work to make the all laser base faster. 
And so if we wanted to, and if we had the power to do it, we could actually start to put down a lot more of these laser drills to make the all laser base here much, much faster. And I kind of think that might not be a terrible idea. If we teach our system how to make those laser drills, it should already know how to make the simple machine frame, and it should already know how to make pistons, and it also should already know how to make basically all of the gears here. Diamond we have, and gold we also have, which need to request one for the recipe. If we look inside the laser drill here, uh, right now the ETA is three seconds, uh, meaning that it's going to take 60 ticks because there are 20 ticks per second in order for this laser drill to complete one cycle of its work, right? And the UI here tells us that every time this laser drill completes a cycle of work, it uses 1000 FE. And so if you do 1000 divided by 60, uh, that means that right now this laser drill is using approximately 16 redstone flux per tick, which is a very low amount. Now, of course, much like uh, some of the other machines from Industrial Foregoing, what we can do is we can take these efficiency and speed add-ons and put those into the laser drills to make them faster. So if we do uh, this and this, uh, we can see now that the laser drill is doing its work every one second, right? So it's doing it every 20 ticks as opposed to every 60 ticks. And so now if we did 1,000 uh, divided by 20, uh, now the laser drill is using 50 redstone flux per tick. I think that's right. And so I'm fairly certain that each laser drill that you have fully upgraded with a tier two speed and efficiency add-on should use approximately 50 redstone flux per tick. All right, so a little while later, and I've made a few more laser drills. I requested four more on top of the 16 that we already had. Uh, so we now have 20 on top of the initial force. So I believe we have 24 laser drills here. And if we look at any one of them, they should all have a working area that encompasses the ore laser base. Even the furthest most ones just about get in. Uh, and of course, you'll see that the uh, by default, the laser drills do have uh, a working area that goes one block above and one block below. So if you wanted to, uh, you could take even just this design here, which is by no means extensive, and build another layer on top and another layer on the bottom of laser drills. Of course, at that point, it does become difficult to power some of them, like getting power to this laser drill, if there's also a laser drill on top of it and beneath it can be quite tricky. Uh, but for now, I think we'll stick with this. And of course, if we are going to make this as efficient and as fast as it can be, we're going to want to make the speed and efficiency upgrades for ideally every single one of those lasers. So for that, I think it's definitely going to be worthwhile us teaching our system here how to craft those. Uh, thankfully, again, our system does have access to latex and the refined storage system uh, can craft with fluids. And so it should really be just as easy as encoding both of these recipes, uh, making sure to get the right diamond gears each time, dropping those in above the dissolution chamber. And then if we have 24 lasers, it's just a case of requesting, say, 24 speed upgrades. All right, so I took a bit of a detour with the Twitch chat here because uh, I did tear down my jungle tree and therefore my latex processing system that we had previously above the surface in uh, the main base over here. We used to have a jungle tree uh, that was right over there by our Twilight Forest portal. However, I tore it down when I got rid of everything up on the surface here. And so now what I've done is I've made yet another compact machine uh, within which we now have a jungle tree uh, with the arboreal extractor. And the plan here is to utilize the ender tank from the ender storage mod. Uh, this is essentially an ender chest, but that can transfer fluids. And uh, thankfully, it's also very easy to make. Uh, we will also, I guess, take two diamonds here. We can use those as a way of locking these, much like we can do with regular ender chests. So we'll put one down right about here. Uh, of course, the base frequency there has been taken by somebody else. That is uh, completely fine. Once again, uh, we could get around that. As soon as you put the diamond on it, it does lock it to yourself, so you don't have to color it. Uh, but just to be on the safe side, I will go ahead and lock this and then give it uh, the white, blue, white frequency. That's going to be our frequency for latex. And so over in the main base, I think what we want to do here is we want to kind of replace this pre-existing tank, I think, with a much larger tank. 
because if we're going to do more large-scale crafts like the one we're attempting right now, we're going to want to be able to store a lot more latex than the default 14 buckets that this basic fluid tank can hold. And that's why we've gone ahead and made another one of these uh, jumbo tanks from Mob Grinding Utilities uh, that can hold over a million millibuckets. Uh, and so now, if we put the ender tank on top, again, set that to uh, white, blue, white, and right click with the diamond, what we should see as soon as we start pumping latex in over on the other side. And another quick thing that I did just learn is that you can configure these uh, pipes, pipes using the uh, configurator for mechanism, which is always good. And uh, you'll see the latex is now in there. And so back over here, we should also see uh, the latex in here, we can. And one nifty thing that you can do with the ender tanks is you can just right click this uh, front little circle and that will set this tank to auto eject. And so we should now see that tank auto ejecting its latex into the tank beneath it, uh, which now has 1,400 uh, millibuckets worth of latex ready to go. So the good news is that uh, we are making latex again and we do have over 10 buckets uh, ready to go there. The bad news is that although this method of making latex is extremely efficient, it's also extremely slow to the point where if we did want to get 24 speed add-ons here, uh, we're still missing 13, almost 14 buckets of latex. And so what might not be a bad idea for us here is to also teach our system how to make latex because it is also makeable by putting vines into the multi-servo press. And so if we go ahead and encode this pattern and then also teach our system how to use the nature essence, which we are now getting from our nature seeds, we already have 2000 nature essence ready to go, we can put the vine pattern in here and we can put the other pattern in above our multi-server press that doesn't have the gear working die. So I'm fairly certain this should work given that we do have an external storage on this jumbo tank. I think if we were to request latex or if we were to request a recipe that requires latex, uh, for example, now if we go and try this again with the 24 speed add-ons, and you'll see it no longer says that it doesn't have the 14 buckets. It just says that it needs to craft them. And so the only one problem that we are going to run into now is that at this very moment, we have no way of taking the latex out of the multi-server press and sending it around into that tank up there. However, there is something we can do here. I think what we probably want to do is we want to set up a tank. Let's say we go with this tank here. It doesn't really matter what tank we use for this, uh, but I think we want to invest in a fluid importer, which is also known in refined storage as an importer. They don't have uh, delineations between fluid and non-fluid importers and exporters. Uh, if we do this, and then if we put a connector down on top of that, like so, uh, we can set this to fluid mode. Uh, what that can allow us to do is over in here, much like we're doing with our ender chest, we have a whole channel dedicated to pulling items out of machines and putting them into that ender chest to then go into the system. We can do the same thing here. If we create a new fluid channel, we can extract from the multi-server press. And again, we want to make sure we get the right one here. So much so that I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, not gears. So over in here, if we find not gears again, which is this one, we can set that to extract. So it's going to pull fluids out. And then over by the tank, we can set that to insert. And so now any fluid made in here should make its way down into that tank. Uh, so much so that if we quickly test that, let's take some vines and let's put those vines into here. They can turn into latex. That latex should make its way to this tank. It does. And then from that tank, it should be imported into the system. And because the system is storing its latex up here, uh, this number here should be going up as we get more latex. And I think it is. You know, we used it all, but that number has gone up from where it was before. And so now the system should work. When we request the speed add-ons, it's going to take... 63 nature essence, turn that into 252 vines, put those vines into the multi-servo press. Those vines are going to get turned to latex. That latex is going to make its way down to the tank. That tank is going to then have its contents imported into the system, which essentially puts it into the other tank, which is what the system uses to auto craft for the dissolution chamber. Start and it begins. The reason I've done it this way, even though this does seem like a very janky way of doing it, uh, is that having this centralized tank, much like we have this centralized ender chest, 
allows us to do a similar thing in the future should we want to automate other recipes that require fluids as well. So we actually already almost have all of the uh, speed add-ons there, uh, and we can probably go ahead and request the uh, 24 efficiency add-ons as well. Uh, this time it is going to have to craft the full 24 buckets of latex, but everything else we should have. Uh, that is going to use quite a few of our diamonds. We are down to just 365. However, slowly but surely, we will uh, get more of those between streams. And of course, uh, the mining laser that we have just set up in this compact machine doesn't just produce iron, copper, tin, gold. It does also produce uh, things like diamond, redstone, emeralds, etc. It produces basically every ore. All right, so not too long later, and we have all of the efficiency and speed add-ons here. So now back through in here, we should be able to set basically everything up. Um, I have gone ahead and made a new flux point. Uh, for now, we'll put that down. Ooh, maybe actually we won't put that down anywhere on top of here because I think what we probably want to do is invest in some more universal cable. You might think the universal cable seems like a, um, a cheap cable. However, it can move up to 3,200 redstone flux per tick. And as mentioned earlier, even if we fully upgrade the lasers, like even if we fully put down the maximum number of lasers that you can put down around the all laser base, that still wouldn't use more than 3,200 FE per tick. So um, we should be good with universal cable for our laser drill, especially given the number that we have right now. Uh, with the current 24 lasers that we have, uh, we're going to use, I think, approximately 1,200 FE per tick. So essentially, we're just going to fill the top with universal cable here making sure not to cover up the laser base there, because that is, of course, where we're going to pull our ores from. And, of course, this guy doesn't actually use power uh, on its own, despite what it might look like in the top left there. This machine doesn't actually require uh, any power directly. It takes all of its power from the adjoining lasers. So uh, we'll do something like this. Make sure that is set to the Gaming on Caffeine network. And that should begin pulling power. Pulling quite a lot right now, but that's just because it's uh, filling up the buffers. And once those are full, you'll see it's cooled down a little bit. So now we should see ores being made. And we do, we got some iridium ore. Nice. So now what we want to do, chat, is we want to go through each and every one of these and add the speed and efficiency add-ons to hopefully make this a good deal faster. So this is working. However, it's not really working in the way that I was hoping it would work. You'll see that uh, the first approximately 100 ores that we have received here are all iridium. And so it seems that in the current version of the mod pack, the only ore that you can get from the ore laser base, if you build your ore laser base in a compact machine, is iridium. It's the only ore that you get, which is less than ideal. So I think we'll leave this as it is for now. Uh, it seems to be working, and I assume the power is holding up. Let me go check on my reactor over here. Yeah, it seems to be holding up just fine. Like you'll see the reactor is still getting turned off uh, when the power gets up there. Uh, the power in the energy cube is still holding around where it normally would be holding. So it seems like power wise, we're doing just fine. It's not using more power than we're producing. Between streams, um, I will either move this out of a compact machine and into its own room, um, or if the pack updates and fixes this, then we'll leave this uh, where it is. Uh, but for now, I think what we'll do is we'll bounce back out into the overworld and we'll finally look at getting uh, maybe at the very least an ore tripling system up and running with mechanism. So once again, if we look at iron ore here, processing this, if we start off with the tripling, that would require a purification chamber. So the purification chamber will bookmark from there, we get these uh, iron clumps that we can then put into a crusher, we'll bookmark. Uh, we then get this dirty iron dust that we can put into an enrichment chamber. We'll make a new one here, bookmark that. And then we can take that uh, iron dust and we can smelt it. So none of these should be too difficult to make, I don't think. Again, a lot of them, basically all of them require uh, pulverizers. The energized smelter does require two redstone furnaces, but again, that shouldn't be a problem for us. Uh, earlier, we did request some steel casing, so that shouldn't be a problem either. So uh, crusher-wise, we need five crushers, I think, two for the purification chamber, two for the enrichment chamber, and then one for the crusher itself. Uh, getting five crushers should be fairly easy. Does our system know how to make the basic control circuits? It does not. That definitely seems like something we should teach our system 
how to make. Again, get rid of the block of redstone. It is unnecessary. Whilst we're here, we should probably also teach it how to make the other tiers of control circuit, uh, basically all the way up to ultimate, even though we don't actually have uh, the ability to make atomic alloys just yet. And speaking of alloys, I did notice that uh, our system currently doesn't know how to make infused alloys. And so that is also something that we should teach our system how to make. So in here, we're going to put all of the circuits and then in here, we're going to put the infused alloy that's going in the one that receives redstone. And so now we should hopefully be able to simply request some basic control circuits. Again, let's say maybe 16 to start with here, start and start. Uh, our system also currently does not know how to make the speed and efficiency upgrades from mechanism. And again, if we're going to make a lot of machines from mechanism, which we're going to have to do if we're going to set up all quintupling, um, I think we're definitely going to want to automate the production of speed and energy upgrades because every single machine requiring eight of these is one of those things where you end up making just way too many of these over the course of a, uh, of a pack playthrough. Energy upgrades incurred. Speed upgrades incurred. I have indeed put this pattern in the wrong crafter. It needs to go in um, above the redstone. So it needs to go in like that. Uh, all of the other circuits do belong in the crafter here. Um, and we are now out of space chat for this energy upgrade. So it might actually be time to make a new crafter or potentially even to upgrade this diamond crafter to a netherite crafter. If we're going to upgrade to a netherite crafter here, the highest tier crafter, which is five times faster than the crafter we currently have and also gives us just shy of 20 extra slots. We're going to have to get uh, four blocks of netherite and two advanced processors. So the advanced processors we can request, that is fine. And then we should probably also, while we're teaching our system stuff, teach our system how to make netherite ingots in the induction smelter using preferably gold ingots. There we go, incurred. So we'll just stick that in above our induction smelter, which is already full of stuff. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a problem, I guess. Um, going forward, what we should probably look to do is change the way that we produce silicon. Right now, we're producing it with our induction smelter using sand and silicon dust. However, it's probably going to be a lot better for us to use a material stoneworks factory. In fact, I might take a quick detour here and see if we can't get this material stoneworks factory. We already have, I was going to say almost everything to make it. By the looks of it, we have just a regular furnace, but thankfully the rest of the items required to make this here are things that our system either already knows how to make, such as the gold gears and the advanced machine frame, uh, or are things that we can make uh, very easily, like crafting tables and pink slime balls. Uh, the pink slime balls being made in the dissolution chamber. And again, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to teach our system here how to make the pink slime balls in code. Uh, I say simp uh, simplicity's sake, because if I were to try and do this manually, I'd have to go and like pull enough pink slime out of the tank and then bring it over, put it in here, make the pink slime ball. I'd probably pull too much pink slime and then have to take some more out. It would be just a whole thing. And so instead, we'll just do this, start and start. And that should hopefully nice and quickly get us a pink slime ball that will be sent back around into the system, at which point, we are just missing two plastic. And boom, we have a material stoneworks factory. Nice. So I think what we'll do here is we will potentially try and hide the material stoneworks factory, maybe just like under ground a little bit. I'm thinking if we put it like here, actually, no, let's put it. It's going to be a bit janky chat, but let's say we put it here. The reason I'm going to put it here is that we can then tell it to just eject the silicon upwards, which will then deposit the silicon into its own storage drawer uh, directly above the material stoneworks factory. So I'll put that here. Uh, we are going to need to get another flux point if we want to give this guy power. So one eye vendor later, boom, flux cores, and boom, there is our maybe ninth flux point of the uh, series. Let's go ahead and drop that down beneath the stoneworks factory. And essentially, for those who don't know, the stoneworks factory is a super nifty block that allows you to basically turn uh, fluids, in our case, we're going to use lava and water, into other blocks and materials. So as I mentioned, we're going to take a bucket of water, and if we can grab one, we're also going to get a bucket of lava, which we should be able to do, and I think for now we'll just snag one from the back of the smeltery over here. 
So all we have to do is right click both of these into the material stoneworks factory, boom and boom. And once you have lava and water in there, it begins to act as just a regular cobblestone generator. However, there are then these four buttons here, and these are toggleable actions that change the way the stoneworks factory behaves. Right now, uh, and by default, they're all set to smelt. And so what happens is every cycle, uh, the material stoneworks factory generates a piece of cobblestone. And then if there's a piece of cobblestone in slot one, it smelts it into slot two, and then smelts it again into slot three. Now, what we want to do is we want to change this to crushing. So we want to crush the cobble into gravel, gravel into sand, and sand into silicon. And so now we have an automatic silicon making machine. We have water and lava being turned into cobble, cobble being turned into gravel, gravel into sand, and sand into silicon automatically. And all we have to do is set the top here to push. And that should then, uh, as soon as we make sure that that drawer is set to silicon, like so, give us an unlimited supply of silicon. And of course, we can also take this one step further. This is a machine from industrial foregoing after all. And so if we make uh, some speed and efficiency add-ons, we can add those to the material stoneworks factory to make it even faster. Not only is this going to make our crafts faster in the future, because right now uh, the silicon is one of the things that really slows us down. Um, if I were to go ahead and request 10 silicon start and start, even with a fully upgraded induction smelter, which we currently don't have, but we can get if we do something like this, the silicon is still one of the slowest recipes in the induction smelter here. And so having a few thousand of it ready to go whenever we need to craft something is going to make our life so much quicker. And more importantly, for now, going to free up this slot here for netherite. So let's go ahead and request 36 netherite here, enough to make four blocks worth start and start. Uh, we should also have those integral components we made earlier. And so I can put this back in there. Beautiful. Uh, those add-ons should also be done. They are. They're in my inventory. Let's go and add those to the material stoneworks factory. Boom and boom. And you'll see that now we're making that uh, silicon much, much faster. And back inside, our netherite is also done. So we'll take four blocks of that. The advanced processes, I assume, are also done. They are indeed. So I assume that the crafters do not retain the patterns when you pick them up. And so I think what we are going to have to do here is like extract basically all... First of all, we can de-encode this pattern. We don't need the one for silicon anymore. Uh, by the way, just shift right click to get rid of that. Um, and then I will quickly clear out some of the junk in my inventory here. And then we'll see about pulling all of these out of here temporarily into this chest. So we can then upgrade the crafter to the netherite crafter and then we can re-add all of the upgrades back in. So boom, netherite crafter. We'll drop that back down. Preferably not there, although that would work. I prefer it to be where the last one was, which is right here. Uh, this now has so many slots that it takes up uh, more space than uh, the GUI scale can currently show, but that is fine. Uh, we can now just begin putting all of these back into that crafter, and we should have space for those extra speed and energy upgrades as well. And there we go. We have all of the crafts in and we even have space for more crafts in the future, should we need them. So back to these crushes here. Do we have what it takes to make one, two, three, four, and five of them? We totally do. From there, we need to make two enrichment chambers, I think. So one and two. The reason we need two is because the purification chamber also requires an enrichment chamber. And for that, we need two advanced control circuits. Thankfully, we did just teach our system how to make those. And so very quickly, those are made boom and boom and so at this point i think the only thing we're now missing is the energized smelter so for that we need more basic control circuits along with two redstone furnaces and uh, out of that the only thing we're missing is bricks hopefully we have eight bricks we totally do i guess we're going to need more though because we need to make two redstone furnaces right and boom two redstone furnaces which we can then upgrade into an energized smelter nice so at this point in time we have theoretically all of the machines required to actually triple our ores however if we're going to make this work it's not quite that simple i don't think um just as a proof of concept let's do energized smelter prior to that i believe it was crusher prior to that i believe it's enrichment chamber and prior to that i believe it's purification chamber oh no so it's crusher first then enrichment chamber but otherwise, the order is correct. So, Crusher, 
enrichment. So it goes from the purification chamber into the crusher, into the enrichment chamber, into the energized smelter. Now, the only tricky part here is the purification chamber because the purification chamber is a machine that also requires oxygen. So we have to put both the ore that we want to process, and I guess in our case, for now at least, that ore that we're processing is going to be iridium, given that we do have almost seven stacks of iridium in here now. Uh, hopefully we can uh, start getting things that are not just iridium in the future. Uh, but over here, we can put this iridium in, but until we get oxygen in the purification chamber, this is not going to work. So to get oxygen, we have to get an electrolytic separator. This guy right here. Thankfully, a very easy machine to make. However, this is one of those machines from Mechanism that can get quite um, expensive quite quickly. So the way this works is you place down the electrolytic separator and this machine takes power to break down water into its base components, uh, which are hydrogen and oxygen. So thankfully, we have placed this down uh, very close to a supply of water. And so what we should be able to do is we should be able to take this pipe and just kind of run that around. At that point, water is going to start getting broken down into both hydrogen and this tank here would normally fill up with oxygen. However, by default, uh, this machine, if we go to gases, is set up to output oxygen to the right hand side, which is this side. And so the oxygen is automatically making its way into the purification chamber. So temporarily, I've made a new flux point that we can throw down uh, really anywhere here. Again, this is not going to be the permanent uh, location for this setup. And again, for now, we can just do something like this. And uh, again, if we just make like one more batch of universal cable, we can connect up that last machine again temporarily. Um, but in theory, I think this system should be working. Now, whether or not we're making enough oxygen here is really the question. It kind of looks like we're not. Um, again, much like all of the other mechanism machines, we can set these to uh, output on the right. And then we want to make sure that the auto eject button is set to on. And that's going to push the clumps over into the crusher. Again, we want to do the same with the crusher, set auto eject on. By default, they are already set to input on the left and output on the right. Uh, so this is working just fine. The dirty iron, uh, the dirty iridium dust makes its way over. Again, auto eject on. And I think, Chad, that this system is working. It's doing its job, which is exactly what we want it to do. Now, the sounds it makes are horrible. The mechanism sounds. Uh, there are, of course, two ways we can handle that. Uh, one is we can come into our muffler here and we can begin just muting all of the mechanism sounds until we're back to blissful silence. Um, alternatively, if you don't have this mod, you can also make uh, the muffling upgrade from a mechanism. Much like the speed or efficiency upgrades, uh, you can put those in and it will just reduce the sound of those machines. Now, right now, you'll see the system is clogged up. And the reason for that is that the electrolytic separator is full of hydrogen. Thankfully, there is a button in the bottom left and the bottom right. Uh, the left button correlates with the left tank and the right button correlates with the right tank. Uh, over here, you can set it to idle, which is where it is right now. However, you can also set it to dump excess. So basically what that will do is that will fill up the left tank on hydrogen, but then when the tank is full, it will begin deleting any excess hydrogen that is made, allowing the system to continue to produce oxygen. Uh, you'll also notice that right now it kind of looks like we're not producing enough oxygen. Uh, so there are a few things we can do there. One thing, of course, is that we can put uh, speed upgrades into the electrolytic separator. That one's a bit of a slippery slope because the way that the electrolytic separator works is that each speed upgrade that you add to the machine doubles the amount of power the machine uses. So right now it's using 160 FE per tick. However, if we add just one speed upgrade, that's going to double to 320. If we add another, it's going to go to 640. And if we added another, it's going to go to 1,280 FE per tick, which is way too much power to be using on just this one machine. And unfortunately, you cannot put energy upgrades into the electrolytic separator, um, or I should say at the very least, you can put energy upgrades into the electrolytic separator, but they don't have an effect. They will not reduce the amount of power that is used. Thankfully, there is another solution here. We can make what are known as gas upgrades for our purification chamber. This upgrade, if we hold left shift, increases the efficiency of gas using machinery, basically meaning that it reduces the amount of gas required for the purification chamber to turn one iridium ore into three iridium pieces. So to make the gas upgrade, we need iron dust and we need infused alloys. Again, I feel like we might as well just go ahead and teach our system how to make this here. As per usual, we are going to first want to start by teaching our system how to make the iron dust. 
And then we can use that iron dust to replace this iron dust in the craft here. Encode, and we'll drop that in like so. And at that point, I'm fairly certain that we can put up to eight gas upgrades uh, into the uh, enrichment chamber, or sorry, into the purification chamber, uh, much like you can put up to eight speed and energy upgrades into most machines for mechanism as well. And once we have eight gas upgrades, we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so now this should be using significantly less oxygen, maybe even so little that we could take out all of the speed upgrades from the electrolytic separator, and it should still be working fine. Um, again, at this point, we could start to put speed upgrades as well as gas upgrades uh, into the purification chamber to make it faster. Of course, the more speed upgrades that we put into here, the faster the machine's going to use oxygen and the faster it uses oxygen, the more uh, speed upgrades we have to put into the electrolytic separator. Thankfully, every other machine outside of the electrolytic, uh, outside of the electrolytic separator can take both energy and speed upgrades. So while you can make them faster, you can also tame the amount of energy that you uh, that they use. It's really only the electrolytic separator that gets kind of crazy when it comes to the amount of power that it requires. Um, but yet, this is essentially an or tripling system. This here is a system that does the same thing that this does, but slightly more efficiently. Uh, we could take the same chunks that are being put into here, and if we put them in over here instead, they would get processed into triple the number of ingots as opposed to double in the pulverizer and redstone furnace setup. Now, again, we can take this even further. The idea that we're going to start looking into in the next stream is ore quadrupling. So if we want to start quadrupling our ores, we have to first start by putting our ores into a chemical injection chamber. And this is where things get a little bit more expensive. The chemical injection chamber already requires reinforced alloys and elite control circuits. Thankfully, thanks to our new metallurgic infuser, we can now make these. The tricky part, is the hydrogen chloride that is required in the chemical injection chamber. The hydrogen chloride is made in a chemical infuser using the hydrogen that we're currently dumping, but we are gonna use very shortly, along with chlorine. The chlorine we can make in another electrolytic separator, uh, this time with brine. And the brine we get using a thermal evaporation controller. Uh, this is basically one piece in a big multi-block thermal evaporation tower that we can set up that uses power to turn water into brine. So it's quite an involved setup to go from tripling to quadrupling, but it's definitely something we can do. Before we get into quadrupling and quintupling, we might want to look at power. Um, although we did just recently uh, set up this uh, extreme reactor, um, already today we have started to use a lot more of the power produced by this reactor. Uh, thanks to that laser, it's using over a thousand redstone flux per tick. And as you can see with the electrolytic separator, this guy also uses a lot. And if we're going to get into quadrupling, uh, we need to get another electrolytic separator. And it's quite possible that we still have to speed this up. Uh, and again, all of these machines here can be made into factory versions of the same machine, uh, much like we've done over here. Uh, we could upgrade our purification chamber into a purifying factory, uh, which again has multiple tiers. You can go basic, advanced, elite, and ultimate. So at the end, you could have an ultimate purifying factory full of speed upgrades and energy upgrades, and that's going to use a lot more power than what we currently have, especially if we make all of our machines factories and speed them all up to their max. That's definitely going to allow us to start producing the kinds of resources or the amounts of resources required for the very end game for the extended crafting and for the ultimate singularities, but it's definitely something that we don't have the power to produce just yet. And so uh, going forward, we might have to start looking sooner rather than later into either upgrading our reactor from a basic to an advanced reactor or looking into other power sources like some of the late game reactors from Mechanism. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.